Hey there, folks. Before we begin this episode, I want to give somewhat of a disclaimer. So back at the end of 2021, I began planning a military surplus adventure. With the video that you're about to see, it was filmed before the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And I just want to make a simple statement here. In no way does the Outdoor Gear Review support what Russia is doing right now in the Ukraine. And of course, the Outdoor Gear Review stands with the Ukrainian people. Now, this channel is all about gear. And that's what this episode is about. I thought about trashing it, but I think everyone here is mature enough to be able to watch this episode and to understand the perspective, my perspective at least, like, hey, I look at gear, that's what this channel is about, that's what this episode is about. To clarify, this episode is about a Russian bivy, and this is something that you're going to see in a future military surplus adventure. I have a wide range of military products that I've purchased, again, prior to the invasion, which will be in that episode. Now, speaking of that adventure, it is going to be interesting, not just because of the gear itself, but because of the stories. After purchasing many of these pieces of military gear from eBay, they all came from Russia, I started getting messages from those sellers and it was something that they sent out to like all of their customers and they said, hey, we do not support this war at all. And many of those people had loved ones who were locked up for protesting it. So there are interesting stories there and they will come out in that future episode. So folks, I appreciate you all. I'm sure you all understand. Take care. Let's take a look at this bivy. My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. I hope you're doing well. What I have here is a very cool piece of military surplus. This time, it's coming from Russia. This is the Russian Ratnik Bivy, which has been designed for the Russian Special Forces. Ratnik, by the way, means warrior. This is very interesting. Very, very interesting. I set this up one time, and I've seen this product before. There's actually a company out there who has copied this design, and that company is Snugpack. They have the Stratosphere Bivy, which is basically a copycat of this. I can tell you this much, folks. This is far more superior in terms of build and quality compared to the Snugpack product. That product has known issues. It leaks. Does this leak? I have no idea yet. This is a first look, a preview. But based upon my initial experiences with this product, I am impressed. That's what this episode's all about. Let's get started. This is the Russian bivy. This is 14 inches by eight inches. Now this can be made to be smaller and I'll tell you more about that in just a moment. So you have this storage bag. There is no handles, there's no loops, nothing like that. You do have a draw pull up here at the top. Check this out. If you purchase one of these bivvies, this is what you get. You get two aluminum poles a storage bag, the bivy itself, and you also get a snow cover. To set up this bivy, it is exceptionally easy. You unroll it, get it where you want it, insert the poles, stake it out, and you're done. When it comes to these poles, they are exactly the same size, and both of these go up here at the top. There's a sleeve that goes this way and a sleeve that goes this way. Then you have grommets, which the poles go into. From here, folks, you can use the bivy. But if you take the time, stake this out, you will have a much better experience inside of this. Unfortunately, this bivy does not come with any stakes, so you will have to supply your own. With this bivy, there's two stake out points. There's one here at the head and one down at the feet. With the bivy all set up, it is 82 inches long. Up at the shoulders, it is 32 inches wide. At the head, it's 27 inches wide. Down at the bottom, 24 inches wide. And at the head, it stands 18 inches tall. That's right, folks, this bivy does taper. It's narrow at the head, wide at the shoulders, and then tapers again down at the foot. Taking a look at the features of this bivy, you have the stakeout point down at the foot. The zipper starts here in the corner, goes around, and goes down to right about there. You have the two poles that crisscross. Then you have this. This actually covers a vent, a mesh vent. It stakes in the front. You have two loops up here at the top so you can roll this back. And when you pull back the cover, you can see the mesh vent. It too is also camouflaged. 
Behind the zipper cover, you have Velcro to hold it into place. You do have this hood, which goes over the zipper. Think of that as a storm flap. To open up the bivy, you start in the corner. You have a single zipper. And then it opens up just like this. On the inside, you have more mesh. This can be zippered so you can keep the bugs out. Then if the weather gets bad, you can seal it up 100%. With the mesh, you are able to roll this up. On top of here, you have a mesh pocket for your phone, gear, and so on. All of the seams are taped when it comes to this bivy. And folks, that is the Russian Ratnik bivy. The weight of this is 4.7 pounds. That's the weight of the entire kit. If you take out the snow cover, the weight goes down substantially. It goes down to 3.1 pounds. The weight of the snow cover itself is 1.6 pounds. That is the snow cover. And it does exactly what you would expect. It goes over the bivy. So it's camouflaged in the snow. It features the same shape and design of the bivy itself. It features a hood. You have a zipper here on the side. It's like getting two bivvies for the price of one. That's not bad for the price that I paid for this, folks. Not bad at all. I could see using the snow cover all by itself. When it comes to the materials, you're looking at a polyester that's been treated with polyurethane. What is the denier of this polyester? I have no idea. This bivy can be found in multiple camo colors, including the EMR, Digital Flora Camo. This is referred to as the Ratnik bivy and also the Ratnik Tunnel Tent. And again, it was developed for the Russian Special Forces and features current military use with the country. If you plan to use this in wet conditions, bring a tarp because when you get in and out of this, water is going to go directly into the bivy itself. And there's no way to prevent this from happening. So if you want to keep this dry, you will need some sort of protective layer, such as a tarp. Getting into the bivy is very easy thanks to the large size zip here. The zipper is very smooth. And again, everyone, the zipper goes all the way up so you can be sealed up inside of it. And that's what it's like, folks all zipped up. At this point here, you could zip it all the way up or you could zip in the mesh, just like so. While inside of this, I could feel airflow coming through the front and also the back. As far as overall size goes, this thing is rather large. My question for you all is this, what do you all think about this bivy so far? I have not tested it out yet, but that's coming soon. My impressions are this, the quality is very impressive. The construction is excellent. The materials are excellent. Talking about the materials, I've read online that it's a polyester treated with polyurethane. When it comes to the feel of the materials, I can't say I've felt anything like it before. It's a very interesting fabric. It is obviously a ripstop, but there's a texture to it that's unusual. I don't know. I like it. It's very neat. I even like the camo to this. The EMR Digital Flora, I think it's pretty sweet. There appears to be no issues when it comes to the stitching, the thread work, the seam taping, or anything like that. The zipper is very smooth. You have pulls on the outside and also the inside. You have a fair amount of mesh for a bivy. In the summertime, do I want to be inside of this? No. No, not really. But that's the case with any sort of bivy, not just this one. The setup of this bivy is super fast. It really is. The form factor is excellent. The weight is not bad. There are lighter bivvies out there, don't get me wrong, but for a military product, 3.1 pounds, that's not bad. The snow cover is very interesting. I don't see myself using it to cover up the bivy, but I can see using it all by itself as a bivy. I could foresee myself like in a snowstorm underneath a tarp using that to keep the snow off my sleeping bag and also to hold in some heat. It would work incredibly well for that purpose. When it comes to the cost, I picked this up on eBay. I paid $85 and that included free shipping from Russia. Copycats of this, for example, the Snug Pack bivy, run about $150. And I can tell you there's a huge difference between the Snug Pack bivy and this one here. This is military grade all the way. You can feel it, you can tell. The materials are substantial. I have to say that I'm quite impressed with this so far, and I'm excited to get this out to use it in the field. Coming up very soon, I will have a military surplus adventure, a Russian military surplus adventure. Also coming up soon, I will have more videos on Russian military gear current Russian military gear. I figured that with so much taking place with Russia today, it would be interesting to take a look at some of their military gear. So more episodes are coming up. Again, sound off in the comment section. What do you all think about this? What do you all think about the digital flora? I like that camo. I think that is sweet looking. I do. That wraps it up for this episode. Hit the thumbs up because it does help out. If you want to support the Outdoor Gear Review, you can do so on Patreon or on YouTube. It is appreciated. Wolfpack, I'll see you soon. Take care. Strength and honor. <laughs>